Hey guys, something really weird happens when you turn 40, like I have just done recently. You suddenly realise, hang on a sec, I only have 15 years, thereabouts, until I can access my private pension. And you might suddenly have a panic when you realise, wait a sec, I have too little saved or nothing saved at all for my retirement. If you're in those shoes, today's video is going to help you. I want to break down step by step what I would do if I was in your shoes. Now, if you're in your 20s and 30s, rest assured, this video is very timely because it means it will help you make sure you're getting yourself adequately prepared for your retirement. If you're in your 50s, I'm sorry to break it to you, it's game over for you. Ah, only joking, only joking, it's not too late if you are in your 50s. I've had many people send emails, DMs, even on LinkedIn, people DMing, asking questions because they're in their 50s and they're trying to work things out. So this video is also very relevant to you if you are in your 50s and trying to work things out, okay? Today's video is gonna be very candid. I've just made some notes on my phone, but rest assured, what I'm gonna be sharing with you guys is what I would do practically to help you move forward. Now, Speaking of which, if you're really enjoying today's video, I'd really, really appreciate it if you hit that subscribe button, uh, share some love for the work that goes on here on our channel. If you think you're already subscribed, like, like a lot of people do, I'd really appreciate if you, if you just spend just, you know, 10 seconds, have a look to see if you're subscribed already. And if you're really enjoying this video, come on, hit that subscribe button and show some love. So what would I do if I was in your shoes? Now, the very first thing I would do is what I call setting the mental foundation. So the first tip is to change your mindset. Now, I would say, now there's a lot that's going on in people's lives. Their various circumstances have led people to a place where they haven't saved enough. And it's not my place to judge or anything, uh, anything like that. But one thing I'd say for sure is that if you're in, if you're at the age of 40 and you have not saved enough for retirement. It, to me, it points to there being an issue with, with mindset uh, uh, at that stage of life. So for me, set changing your mindset is very important because I believe very strongly that building wealth begins in the mind. You would have heard me say in, a, in previous videos, and this is a quote that I love, the quote goes, whatever your mind can believe and conceive, your mind can achieve. And if you're not able, if you're not in that place where you believe you can build wealth, or you believe you can achieve financial freedom, or you believe that you can get to, to have a comfortable retirement, if you don't believe it, everything I'm sharing and everything you're, you're watching on YouTube or on all these other platforms is actually a complete waste of time. So for me, shifting that mindset is the beginning stages of, of of this journey of getting to a place where you're preparing adequately for your retirement. Now, saying it is not enough. I believe very strongly that changing your mindset has a lot to do with there being evidence that your mind mindset has shifted. And I'll give you some uh, practical examples. The first is, have you gotten away from the toxic people you have in and around your life? The toxic and mediocre people who have that mindset that, hey, look, it's just the way it is. Life will not change. You just work every day and pay bills and that's all you're here to do in this world. If you have those people in and around your life, I would press the eject button and eject them straight out. Get them out of your life or get away from those people because you will not move forward if you have people with that sort of mindset in and around you. You need people who believe that even with the challenges in the economy, in the global economy, that you can still create a level of result. You can still create abundance. You can still become financially free. Yes, you work hard, and we'll get into the hard work in a minute, but you can have that change in your life. If you have people like that in and around you, then you've got evidence that your mindset is starting to shift. That's number one. Number two is to get on the same page with your partner, if you have one, of course. One of the biggest challenges I see with a lot of couples is that they're just not on the same page. One person wants to send their child to private school and the other one's like, you know what, I'm trying to prepare for retirement and I'll get to private schools in a minute and, you know, not trying to, you know, um, knock anybody who's, who's doing this and, you know, of course, do what you want. But I mentioned this point particularly because I've noticed in the African community, 
uh, and this might be in the Asian community as well or in the, in the typical British community and beyond. Even in America, in fact, I watched a movie yesterday and this same thing came up where people effectively are sending their children to expensive schools at the cost to their retirement. You think to yourself, why are you doing that? Yeah, particularly if you're struggling to make that happen, why are you doing it? So there needs to be a hard uh, shift, a hard question being asked. What do you really want? If you're in your 40s and you're not adequately prepared for retirement, why are you still living that life where you're paying for things that clearly you're not able to afford because you're not preparing for retirement? So I think another evidence is, are you making those hard choices? You know, are you prioritizing your retirement? And the final one is, is are you learning? What are you learning from? Who are you learning from? Are you learning from people who've been on the journey, who have actually worked towards achieve retirement or people who've become financially free? If you're not learning from such people, and there are lots of people who claim a load of rubbish on the internet, if you're not learning from people who know what they're talking about, then you need to find those people and learn from them. To that end, I want to mention, for those of you who've pre-ordered our book so far, thank you for doing so. For those who haven't, I'll put a link to our, our debut book titled Financial Joy and Above. It's a 10-week plan to help you banish debt, grow your money, and unlock financial freedom, okay? Uh, so that's tip one, change your mindset. Now, tip two is you need to use what I call the 3.5% rule, or effectively decide on how much do I need to retire? How much do I need? to actually make that a reality. Now this calculation will differ depending on where you are in the world because effectively what's known as your safe withdrawal rate, how much you need to withdraw from your portfolio one day when you retire, will differ depending on where you are in the world. Now I'm gonna, I'm gonna spare you the boredom of doing the research because we've had to do this extensively for our book that I mentioned earlier, but for the UK, the percentage to use is 3.5%. So take a calculation, just do this as a rough calculation. Let's say, for example, that you need 2,000 pounds in income to pay for your expenses when you are in retirement, for example. Take that number of 2,000, multiply by 12 to annualize it. So that's 24,000 and divide that by 3.5% or 0.035. And the number you get is 685,714 pounds, okay? Now, if you are in America, the number to use is 4%. So again, it's 24,000 or 2,000 times 12 is 24,000 divided by 4% will give you $600,000, yeah? So that's, that's a rough, almost rough uh, fag packet calculation for how much you need to retire. Now, those percentages will differ depending on where you are in the world. So it's typically between 3% and 4% but you know what they are in the UK and the US. And those US numbers can be applied to Canada and you know those kind of parts of the world in North America. Uh, and the UK number can be applied to other parts of Europe, for example. That's number two. So we know how much we want. Now, that means we've got a bit of a goal, okay? Now, tip three is to create what I call the money foundation, okay? Now, with the money foundation, here what I mean is, um, making some hard decisions about certain aspects of your finances. So the first area is debt, which is, uh, you know, getting rid of expensive debts in your life. So things that are costing you, you know, typically double digits, so credit cards and payday loans and what have you, those have to be target if you're trying to build towards retirement, right? I know I'm speaking foundational things, but these foundational things are often ignored on our quest for things like retirement. So you need to get rid of those debts. Now, you must also choose a fixed percentage to start to save and investing. So almost think of them as, I'm getting rid of debt, but I need to save and invest, which is the key bit. Now, in order to, and this is where it gets hard, because I talked about the hard work, in order to get to that place where you're able to do that, some hard decisions need to be made, okay? Pick the first one. You need to downsize your car. If you've got a car right now, and it's a car that costs you, it was an expensive car, a car that you're paying for monthly, that essentially, if you're being honest with yourself, points to you living above your means potentially, or living you know, uh, in excess, you need to downsize that car, right? You need to be real, right? People still laugh at me when they realize that Mary and I still drive a 2013 car. You might think, oh, you guys are financially independent. You're financially free. Why are you still driving a banged up car? Or oh, it's not really banged up, but it's, it's, a, it's an older car. Why are you still driving an older car? That's because like, 
I don't like to feel like I'm wedded to paying lots of things every single month. That's why I choose to pay off, the, we choose to pay off our mortgage, pay off our, you know, bought a car, cash down, you know, all those things. We prefer not to have a life tied to owing other people, effectively being imprisoned by other people. So if you're in that place where you're driving a car like that, I would say the first step is to downsize your car. Now this next one's gonna be hard, but you may need to downsize your house. This is a hard conversation. I had someone recently DM me on Instagram, uh, on LinkedIn, and I was really pleased. And she said to me, she said, I downsized my house and I've become mortgage free from doing that. And I'm now planning for my pension because I have zero pension. This person actually was one of the people that inspired today's video. Yeah. And I need to speak to her and do some one-to-one -one conversations and coaching and what have you. But the point is, is that downsizing was a key, almost a, a domino for her starting to work towards her own version of retirement. Yeah. Effectively, what I'm saying here, at this stage of, uh, of tip three of creating the money foundation, you need to downsize your life. If you're at the age of 40 or in your 40s or in your 50s and you are not having saved enough for retirement, you need radical action. And downsizing is clear evidence that this means enough for you to make the changes that are necessary for you to achieve your goal. Tip three is you need to tell your money where to go. Now, I've created a little thing here that I want to show you guys. Effectively, some recommendations or some suggestions on how I would think about where your money should go, right? So when you get paid monthly, where should that money go on a monthly basis in order for you to achieve your goal? This is a guide, obviously. You can tweak this depending on your personal circumstances. I'd say 10% of your gross income ideally should head straight into your pension and have it invested uh, in the stock market, and I'll get to that in a minute. Then when you get your net income, the money that hits your bank account, you need to allocate every pound or dollar. I've put some percentages here, 10% towards paying off expensive debts, 5% towards an emergency fund and building up one, 15% um, towards investing in your stocks and shares, uh, stocks and shares ISA and what have you, and I'll get to more of that in a minute. 50%, this is controversial for some people, and this is hard given the cost of living crisis, but again, you can make it work if you really want to achieve your goal, yeah? This is about hard realities. If you really want to achieve your goal and you make the changes I suggest on this today's video, you can get to a place where you, your, your, your needs only cost you 50% of your net income. That's the goal, okay? Uh, I've put here 5% for once. Again, people, you know, debate about this and go, how on earth are you gonna put 5% for once and fun? But hey, you know, at least you're getting some fun. And then I've put here 10% towards giving because this is sacred for a lot of people uh, who, who give and who see this as a key part of their lives. And I, I believe so as well. And then finally, I've put 5% towards growth and risk. So this is where you're taking some risk to make more money. Now, outside of this, if I had to almost consolidate it, uh, just kind of rubbing this off to write a, a little summary for you guys. If I had to consolidate these, I would say that where I would want to get to personally is a world where I basically have 50% going towards my needs, yeah? Then I have 40% uh, going towards my investing, and then I've got 10% left over. Now, this is very interesting because if you think about it, ultimately, what matters when it comes to achieving that goal that you want for your retirement is the degree to which you are able to save and invest. Of all those numbers, the most important of all of them is this number here, this key number here. I'll put here 40%. Now, this is in the extreme scenario. Obviously, you're not going to start off at 40% on day one. However, you need to work up to this level. If you're 40, aim for 40%. Aim for it. Now, you might start at 10%. Or 15% and then work your way up. But well, this is where I'd aim at aim for at least 40% being saved and invested. Because then you mean business. Yeah? You mean business because you are taking this thing very seriously. 10% then goes towards other stuff. Yeah. 50% 50% towards your needs. This goes towards other things. But this is you saving and investing and plowing that into other various assets. Now, what could those assets be? that you're investing that money into. Now, ordinarily, you could invest that money into the stock market. And this is by far the almost the le the, 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 the easiest and almost the, the lazy approach to building wealth because if you, you can obviously invest, set it and forget it. The S&P 500 is a great option. 
Look at what's happened to the S&P 500 in the last 12 months. It's insane how, you know, the stock market continues to surprise a lot of people. Generally speaking, over time, the stock market, as we know, trends upwards over time, okay? So choosing to invest in S&P 500 or in a global tracker, essentially an index fund on ET or an ETF, is a great way to go about investing that money and letting that money work for you. Alternatively, you can explore other asset classes like property, for example, but I always stress a bit caution when it comes to property. Although I'm a fan of the asset class and I have a love and hate relationship with it, I kind of think that, you know, it's not for everybody at all. It's a huge uh, area of risk and a huge area of expense. Uh, and so if, you're, if, you, if you don't want any problems, you don't want any heartache and headaches and every kind of ache, you probably just want to stick to the stock market and just make that happen. Of course, you can invest in, into other areas such as a business and commodities and what have you. And I'll come to some of those areas later on in this video. So tip four, like I said, is to tell your money where to go. Tip five, okay, being very specific, is I will create a limited company and run a business from it. Let me explain why. The reason I say that is because you might not know this, and this is speaking to retirement specifically. You might not know this, but the amount of money you can pay into a pension from a limited company without paying any corporation tax on that money increased from £40,000 per year to £60,000 per year. Wow! 60 grand! Just think about that. That means you can set up a, a side hustle or a business and given the urgency of your situation, trying to build up your savings for retirement, you need to hustle, you need to work hard, you need to like do, go above and beyond, beyond your job. You need to literally do everything possible to do, create another vehicle for making money. Whether it's a service-based business using your existing skills, or a product-based business, or a content-based business, whatever kind of business you want to create, you need to create something. And of course, it will not happen overnight. It will require you being quite brave, it require you, you know, you know, you know, coming out of your comfort zone. It require you being patient and persistent and really, really going for it, studying what's already in demand, really doing a lot of research, putting your money where your mouth is, all those things. It require all those things. But the point is, if you set this up really well, you're able to, over time, and this will not happen overnight, yeah, and forget about the naysayers who think too small. You have to think big to make a big difference to your finances. Over time, you can get to a place where if your business is generating, say, making it up 60,000 pounds in income, or 30,000 pounds, or 10,000 pounds, whatever pounds or dollars you're making, in pounds in the UK, you can contribute that money, uh, that revenue that comes in, because think about it, revenue comes in, let's say it's 50K, 50K comes in over a year, for example, that 50K can go straight out into your pension, straight out, because it's treated as a tax deductible expense. And of course, it goes straight from there into your pension, your private pension, your self-invested personal pension, wherever you've, wherever you've got it. I've got one at Vanguard, for example. There are many other providers. I've got another one at Hargreaves Lansdowne, which I put a link to below and above, actually, for you to check it out if you want to open an account. There are many different options. You can go and you know, do your research and find uh, an account that's suitable, an open one, a SIP. But my point is you need a vehicle and the business, the limited company is your vehicle for helping to boost that pension. And now think beyond that. You might be thinking, oh yeah, 60K, no, no, it's not just that. Imagine you were doing 40K a year from that business, yeah? 40K over five years, just by itself is 200,000 pounds, even before your money has started to compound and grow. Stick 200K, uh, or 20k a year, which is uh, 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 into into a compound interest calculator, and maybe use a realistic growth rate of maybe you know seven percent or something uh, beyond inflation, or or five percent beyond inflation, and just see what that does over time. It becomes really really significant. Now I'm going into this much detail because I want you to grasp onto this as a possible reality for you and not just an idea you heard from some guy on the internet. If you apply what I'm sharing with you and if you if you cast a vision and see it as something that's possible for you over time and you and you see it and you actually take the steps to make it a reality and not just kind of sit in your in your area of comfort, 
this over time could become the picture that you paint for your retirement one where you are one day retiring down the line perhaps in 10 years 15 years 20 years down the line with a comfortable retirement okay that's tip five tip six is to keep your lifestyle simple this is a no-brainer tip but it's worth stressing the amount of people who overlook such simple things like keeping your lifestyle simple you know i and i can i can see where um people struggle with this because social media and life around us can also always, always make us feel like we need to be spending all the time we need to you know um keep up appearances we need to keep up with the next door neighbor or that family member or even your siblings you're spending and you're keeping up but i have to stress if you're in a position where you're struggling and you haven't built enough of a pot for your retirement keeping your lifestyle simple is and living below your means significantly below your means is one of the best most practical things you can do speaking practically things like if you've got a bonus at work what do you do with it do you book that next holiday no you invest that money you put that money to work yeah if you get a salary rise a pay rise what do you do with it you suddenly you know have lifestyle creep you upgrade your house or your car no obviously not you invest that money you put that money to work yes it will be difficult to make those hard choices but I can guarantee that those hard choices are what you need to make if you are in your 40s or in your 50s, for example, and you haven't quite saved enough for your retirement just yet. Tip seven to wrap this video up is that you plan for the worst and you protect your wealth. Now, obviously, if you've been building this foundation and you are now preparing for that retirement, life can happen in between that. You know, anything can happen. And I like to keep it real with you guys. Like, you could pass away. What happens to all that money you've been saving and investing? How do your family members inherit it? Like, what happens? So this way, let's think about things like your will, in your power of attorney, your life insurance. You need to put certain things in place. And I know it's a bit of a morbid topic, but this is very important. My wish, obviously, is that you live a long life, happy, healthy, abundant, all those things, as, as I wish for myself. But we need to assume the worst as we're building wealth and prepare for those potential and almost inevitable eventualities. Guys, I'm gonna stop there and say, I wrap up this video by saying, remember this journey of preparing for reti retirement or working towards financial freedom for the future is possible. If you, took, if you take anything away from this video, I just want you to remember that it's possible. Yeah, Speaking from someone who's been there who's gone on that journey and who's achieved financial freedom. I don't just say it carelessly. I'm aware there's a lot going on in people's lives. There are many things happening in the economy. There are many things going on in the world. They're just, all these things have always gone on and all these things will always go on. There'll be no day that you turn the TV on or the radio on and they suddenly tell you, oh, prices have fallen. Your bread and your milk suddenly has become ridiculously cheaper. It doesn't happen. Prices will always go up. Wars will always happen in the world. The economy will always have cycles. Things will always just happen. But if you believe that even in the midst of all this turmoil, you're able to radically change your life, that belief is what you need as the seed to be sown to begin this journey of creating your own life of financial freedom and ultimately a, a comfortable retirement down the line. I really hope this video has inspired you, encouraged you, and given you some practical steps. If you have any further questions, please jump in the comments and uh, let me know. I've had many people actually ask me in the past, can you offer one-to-one -one coaching? I do. If you want to know more about that kind of stuff, I'll link again below and uh, above for you to go and check it out. Okay, other than that, thank you guys so much for watching today's video. And as always, in all things, be thankful and seek joy. Take care. Bye for now.